very briefly, I see here that the department is projecting an average of 13,000 to 16,000 new arrivals in the next four years. Is that 13,000 to 16,000 each year or in total overall? Just, just briefly on, on that point. So the average over the last two years has been 13,000 per year, so it would be 13 to 16,000 per year. Grant. Uh, and also on that point, Minister O'Gorman, as, as you know, in 2021, you published tweets in eight different languages, such as Arabic, Georgian, and Albanian, offering own-door accommodation and various other benefits to asylum seekers. And I've interviewed asylum seekers who said on camera that they came to Ireland from the UK specifically to avail of opportunities that Justice Minister Helen McEntee had offered. I came from uh, England. I live in England around 15 years. I work there uh, in black, uh, black market. But when I, when I hear about uh, Ireland and I hear about the justice minister in, in, in Ireland, uh, they open uh, for everyone for, to get uh, a visa uh, for asylum seeker. Uh, and I think it's, it's a good country to, to get a visa from here. So do you think then the reason you came to Ireland from England was the opportunities that were available in Ireland? I think yes, yeah. So I'm wondering, whatever your initial intent may have been, in hindsight, do either of you accept that your statements and actions might have contributed or created a pull factor that uh, we're seeing now with the asylum numbers in Ireland? Uh, well, I didn't tweet in the way you, you say. What I did is we provided the information about the white paper uh, across a number of languages, recognising that there are people uh, of many different nationalities in the international protection system at that time, as there is right now, and allowing them to understand the changes that we were making. And that it was, it was the executive summary of the document that uh, was tweeted and uh, was converted into different languages and was tweeted. There was no offer, as you uh, portrayed there. Um, we'll continue to inform those in the international protection uh, process in terms of the changes that we're looking at, that, that we're looking to make. But I think it's also very clear uh, in terms of that kind of wider discussion about, uh, about push and pull factors. We know since December of last year, we haven't been able to accommodate everybody uh, arriving in the country. Uh, we know there, are, there have been people and are people sleeping rough right now, and yet in January and February of this year, we've seen the highest number of arrivals per, for a month ever. So uh, I think this uh, question of pull, fa I, I think it's far more a question of um, push factors, that people uh, fleeing wars, fleeing conflict, are looking to get into Europe, looking to, to move to the EU for safety, for shelter, some for economic reasons, uh, and where that's identified in the International Protection Programme, they won't get international protection. Um, but I think it's the push factors from the many countries uh, where there is war, where there is conflict, uh, where there, is, uh, there aren't economic opportunities, those are the things that draw people to Ireland, not anything that I've ever tweeted. I'll respond just, um, it is so important that we always do the right thing here. And for me, the right thing is providing protection for those who genuinely need it. The world is a changing place. There is significant increases in conflict across the globe. Climate change is having a massive impact. Uh, and there are people who genuinely are fleeing starvation, persecution and war. And I think as a country, particularly people who have sought refuge in other countries over the years, there is an onus on us. And I think people want to provide that protection at the same time for those who are coming here seeking economic benefits, uh, and we don't blame people for that. This is not the right system to use. So again, I won't apologize for saying the international protection system is not for those who are economic migrants. Everything that I have been doing for the past three years is to make sure that system turns people around quickly, that it's fair to those who genuinely need our help, and it's firm to those who don't. And I think the vast majority of people would agree with having a system like that. Uh, if saying that attracts people to this country, um, I, I won't change those words. I think we need to protect those who need it, provide the support for those who need it. But for those who don't, and there's a lot of people coming here who don't need our protection, I'm very clear as well, they shouldn't be here. They need to be returned home as soon as possible.